So you picked up your first e-ink device and now you're looking for a way to incorporate your workflow. Or are you in the market to get one of these devices and you just want to see what you can do with it? Today we're going to go over how I set up my workflow on the Books Go 10.3. Let's talk about it. Welcome everybody back to the channel. This is Aaron Reed with 2530 Media. And today we're going to talk about workflow. Set up your workflow uh, on your e-ink device. Now, all of these e-ink devices, they're not made to sing. You have certain features on like a Supernote, Nomad, or Manta that you don't have on the 10.3 that you won't have on, let's say, a Kindle Scribe or some of the other e-ink tablets that are out there on the market. Now, they have their strengths and weaknesses. All of these platforms do. So it just depends on which platform you're working with and what you actually find that can help you with your daily workflow. I primarily use the 10.3 with my daily workflow. So today we're gonna go over what that process looks like for me. Uh, I'll show you guys the framework of what I use to gather all of my information uh, in one spot that makes it easily accessible. With just one click, I can jump back and forth between notebooks, PDFs, even web pages if I need to. Now, we're going to be primarily working in the notes app that's native to the 10.3. We're going to be using a combination of headers and links to be able to set up a filing system within my notebooks that will allow me to focus on that one task that I'm doing. It gives me the option to effectively complete those tasks. Now, this method that I'm going to show you is something that you can use for any application. I use this method for things like uh, brainstorming my creative ideas for my YouTube video. I also use this format when writing out scripts for my short films. I use this format as well with my daily journaling. I have morning thoughts that I do and I also have a daily journal that I do. I use this format to be able to file all of those things in one quick, easy access page. Now the Books Go 10.3 doesn't have a outline template. The Books Go 10.3 also doesn't have like a table of contents template. So what I'm about to show you is how I set up what I like to call a landing page or a table of content for your notes to be able to quickly jump back and forth between notes. Like I said, notes, uh, PDFs. You can even add web pages to those things. Uh, you can link uh, your reading material to it. There are plenty of other applications that you can use this format uh, that I found is a good way for me to be able to go back and forth with my information. So let's get into it. So I always start my navigation from the home screen. And from the home screen, we're going to use the native notes app to the 10.3. Once I'm in the native notes app for the 10.3, uh, I'm going to go to my folders view, and now I'm going to create a new folder first. We're going to name our new folder sci-fi horror script for example purposes. Once we have our new folder created, now we're going to go into our folder to start our framework. Once we're inside of our new folder, the first thing we're gonna do is create our landing page or my table of contents page. So to do that, I am going to create a new notepad. We'll start with the blank one. I like to use the blank notepad as my landing page or table of contents. So from here, I'll give the title. It's just gonna be sci-fi horror script. Here we're gonna start with our two main characters. Um, our two main characters are gonna be the characters that we'll start our example character development for.
Now, before I navigate out of, off of this page, I'm going to name this notebook. Once I've named this script, we're going to back out so I can start my character development for my first character, which will be Mike Smith. So from here, I like to add a new notebook. This time we're going to use the line page. This time I'm going to give it a name up here. Now I'm going to create. Now I have my first notebook for my character development for my new character. It's going to be Mike Smith. This is where I'll be able to put any information about this character and pertains to character development, uh, what type of clothes that this character will wear, how this character will interact within the storyline. I'll be able to put all of that information here. Once I have this done, I also would like to make uh, Mike Smith a tag so it can be searchable. I'll leave the tag as Mike Smith. Now I can continue writing about this character or I can back out to write some things about the next character. Now, once I get back to my landing page or page of contents, I can go ahead and start linking the notebook to the appropriate character. That way I can easily navigate back to my landing page. I'll do this by linking my notebook from Mike Smith to his name here on my landing page. After I use my smart lasso to highlight his name, I'm going to go to link. We're going to go to link notes. From there, I'm able to find the note that I made for my character, Mike Smith, by just quickly hopping into the folder I made for this script. And now you see I have the page for Mike Smith. Once I select that, hit my check mark. I want to leave it as icons and titles, but you can search it as icon and title or icon only. Now that I have done that, I have linked Mike Smith's entire character development notebook to my landing page. Now we'll add the second character. We'll do line page again. Now I have my second notebook for my second character. I'll do the same thing I did with the last one. We'll make her name a tag. So now all the information that will pertain to Sarah Oliver will be here in this notebook. So now we'll just back out, go back to my landing page one last time. And now I can also link Sarah Oliver's notebook to her name on my landing page. So now I'm back in my landing page. 
Now I'm ready to write information, do my brainstorming, whatever creative writing I need to do to start the character development for these two characters is now here in my landing page. So what I can do is I can jump between page to page very easily now is by selecting whatever link that I need quickly under these two names. So we'll start with Mike Smith. Now that I've selected Mike Smith's name from the link on my landing page, I can do whatever work I need to do. I can add whatever I need to add, uh, whatever that is. I'm just drawing shapes here for an example purpose. And once I'm through adding anything here, let's say I need to reference Sarah Oliver's page to see how I want them to interact. Uh, I can simply now hit my back arrow here. That's gonna take me back to my landing page for quick reference. And I can hop into Sarah Oliver's page. I quickly hop into Sarah Oliver's notebook now. Now I can write down whatever information I need to write down here. I can add as many pages as I need to. I can change my template if I need to. If I wanna add a different type of template, I can add that. And I can always go to my back arrow here, which will take me back to my landing page or table of contents, whatever way you wanna name it. I can add as many names as I want to to this and add as many links to notebooks to be able to give me that ability to jump back and forth. While I'm in this mode as well, if you've noticed, my arrows have changed to back and forward. So if I wanna quickly go back to the page I just left from, I click that arrow and it takes me back to the Sarah Oliver page. And I can reference whatever it is that I need in this notebook. and then I can easily jump back to my landing page. Also, when I'm at my landing page, if I wanna add another landing page for more corresponding information with this sci-fi horror script that I'm using as an example, I can always add another page, give it another title, add more details and links to more notebooks. And you can always jump back to your landing page. Once I'm through working in this notebook or this folder, all you have to do is hit the X. And now I'm back to my folders view. Also, once I create this, now I've created it. Now I'm working with, with inside of my workflow. I like to do one more thing. Um, when it comes to my landing page. So you see I have my sci-fi horror landing page. I just like to make that my favorite. Once I make that my favorite, it makes it even quicker for me to navigate to it because normally I leave my notebooks homepage on my favorites page. That way, as soon as I open the notes app on a 10.3, I have a list of my favorite folders or pages that I'm working with on a regular basis. You see here I have the sci-fi horror. I have my morning coffee, which is my daily journaling homepage. I have my character development for a script that I'm currently working on. And then I have my daily journal that I'm writing in daily. Um, so every time I open a notes app, I'm here on my home page for the notes app, it's gonna be my favorites. And I can just quickly navigate to whichever one of these uh, pages I wanna deal with first. So for example purposes, we'll click on the sci-fi horror. And now I'm back at my landing page and I can quickly navigate to my next page to do my work. So this is how I set up my workflow in the 10.3 to organize my files and my work um, using a landing page or like a table of contents. Since the 10.3 doesn't have a true outline mode and it doesn't have the quick list reference that the Supernote products have. Another cool thing with the 10.3 is 
I like to work out of my daily planner or the memos app that's on the 10.3. I call it my daily planner, but I like to work out of the 10.3's memo app or calendar app. So when you're in the 10.3's memo app or calendar app, if you notice here, it says today's notes. These are all the notes that I've opened up uh, recently. And it's like a quick list for me to go to. So if I am in my notes app and I'm planning out my days and when I go to my day here, I can see what I've previously opened. Uh, so we'll just click on Sarah Oliver and I'm back to the Sarah Oliver's notebook and I can continue doing my work and I can simply just swipe back. And it takes me back to my memo and I can go to the next thing that I want to quickly reference. So if it's my sci-fi horrors homepage again, I'm back here. And then I can quickly navigate through whatever work that I'm getting done for this project. So this is just an example of how I set up my workflow on a books go 10.3. Like I said earlier, each device has the pros and cons. Um, each device has certain features that will allow you to do this that others don't. So really it's just about finding a platform that you're most comfortable with and figuring out how to set up that workflow with that platform that you have. So I would like to hear in the comments, maybe what platform you guys are using. If you're using a Supernote or the books or maybe Pinstar or any of the other devices. And if so, let me know how that looks with you setting up your workflow. If you have a Go 10.3, let me know what you're doing to set up your workflow. Because like I said, I'm not sure if this is the best way or the most efficient way to do it. This is just what works good for me. So I would love to hear in the comments what you guys are running and what you guys are using to set up your workflow. Like always, thanks for checking out the channel. Hit that like button.